Yaho, YouTube. I'm Super Genki, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about having hope in the future. It's tough to do. I can tell you that from first-hand experience. If you spend all of your time in the same places, doing the same things, meeting the same people, you're gonna forget to do it. In these times, it's really easy to fall into the pace of impossibility, forget to search for people who are working on it for themselves, and become truthfully lost. These are just some of the feelings you will encounter down the path of self-improvement. And it is a one-way street. There will always be the things you know, the things you don't know, and then the things you don't know you don't know. And that forward vision to keep moving down the path is found in the latter. What started as a simple meeting on a train headed to DC led me to the path of remembering. We have to be the hope that we want to see in the future. That's why in this video I'm going to show you some of the amazing people that I met down this path. people to be added in Africa by 2050. What an opportunity. And have you ever imagined having an avenue to invest in this opportunity and hand a great return on investment of up to 45%? Hi, my name is Adewale Oparidi and I'm the founder and CEO of Easy Fund. With me here today is Alaji Kago, one of our technical lead and the director of Sierra Leone Operation. Growing up, as a child in a rural community in the area of Sioux State, Nigeria, I watched my father day after day, year after year, and season after season, doing the same thing on his farm. And I thought to myself, if family is small, old, with no access to credit, then it's not for me. This is the story of many young Africans today who are unemployed, but do not see family as a lucrative career because family is small, Old, with no access to credit. <laughs> in Africa. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if Africa is to be able to meet the food demand of its upcoming 2 billion population by 2050, then its agriculture, which is currently dominated by small scale farming, needs to move towards commercial and sustainable agriculture. To achieve this, we need to connect, invest, and empower the sector. I'm happy to introduce to you Easy Farm. Easy Farming is a digital crowdfunding platform connecting local African farms with retail investors around the world to scale small farms into commercial sizes and equip the next generation of farmers. We do this by using data to identify the most promising small older farmers who have potential to go to scale. This is an example of one of our farmers, Olani Farm. As of September 2018, Olani Farm was raising less than 2,000 chickens. We rented two abandoned poultry farms and invested over $24,000. And today, this farmer has added over 13,000 beds and currently training five new interns. Why are we doing this? We are doing this because we are motivated by the everyday hardship that young people face in establishing a career in Africa. I'm sure a lot of us might be aware of the CNN story that our talent in Africa mentioned about when young Africans are being sold as slaves, this is part of what motivated us to start Easy Farm. And now, about 60% of unemployed youth in Africa are unemployed. <laughs> These are examples of some of our interns currently in Nigeria. This vision is driven by a dedicated team of farmers, technologists, and bankers. And we are lucky to have Dr. Howard Boyce. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bridget Watcher from Akka Ghana, representing talents in Africa. Okay, I want to start by telling you a serious story, though, and that is the story of a young man by the name of Andrew. Andrew received a degree in laboratory science technology from a polytechnic in Nigeria in 2011. After five years of searching for a job, even with a degree and not being able to find one, he decided to make the journey into Europe. In October of just last year, Quartz Africa chronicled his difficult journey from Nigeria by foot into Libya and now crossing the Mediterranean, Mediterranean and now in Libya where he works as a cashier. But however disheartening Andrew's story is, he's perhaps still among the lucky few. 
there are still hundreds of thousands of young African migrants trapped in Libya. If many of you saw on social media in 2017, there were graphic videos of Africans being sold in slave markets in Libya for just $400. We are young Africans in Africa who have seen this problem and we're on a mission to solve it. So why invest in us? Well, one, we're, actually we've talked about at this conference, we're young Africans solving this problem. We know that no one else knows the problem better than us and no one else can fix it better than we can. Moreover, there's a certain urgency at this moment that we need to capitalize on. As we've heard from Health First and, and um, countless other entrepreneurs in our market, if they don't have the talent or, the, or a way to source the talent, they cannot build the businesses that we envision for our future. We're on a big mission to reach 10 million job seekers in the continent by 2020. But we know that we cannot do it without your help. So today, by investing in us, you're not only investing in our company, but you're investing in the future of Africa, and you're investing in the future of young talent, so that we do not have stories like Andrew's. I know we've talked a lot about opportunities on the continent, but I implore you to remember that Africa's greatest resource is not in the minds, but in the minds of its young people. Ghana is a beautiful country, blessed with enormous natural and human resources. However, our lifestyle choices is hurting our country. Every day, over 75 million pieces of water such as are produced, and the majority of them end up in open spaces. Not only the plastic waste, but also together with other sorts of waste, and this poses a huge environmental challenge to our country. There's a lot of flooding, the plastic waste are being burnt, and as you know, all the waste, um, it's, going, uh, it's a big problem and a lot of people are dying. World Bank's um, statistics from the World Health Organization puts Ghana as part of the top 10 dirtiest countries in the world. Ghana is a lower middle income nation, and Ghana is not supposed to be within that category. This is Julius. Julius, like many other young Ghanaians, do not want people to call their country dirty, and they want to do something to change the narrative. However, they need, the, they need support and, the, and resources to be able to do so. That's where we come in as Recycle Up Ghana. We, are, we believe we share the philosophy that young people are the current and future change makers of society, and, as such, and also we believe that local people should be solved by, local problems should be solved by local people. Using design thinking methodology, we, we, designed a, we came up with a three-phase approach to organize educational training programs to support young people in Ghana to come up with ideas and solutions to solve the challenge that we are facing. We train them not to see the, uh, the issue as a, as, a, as a problem, but to take a, uh, advantage of it and see it as an opportunity to create businesses out of waste. Our first, the first phase of our training program is the knowledge phase, where we take them to workshops, training to build their um, capacity, but also to expose them to the challenges that we are facing. What have we done so far? We've, um, we started in 2014, and since then we've uh, organized over seven summer camps, trained over 200 recycler ambassadors who have been amazing work in Ghana, and with the multiplicator effect, we have reached about, over 8,000 Ghanaians. We've organized summer camps in three different regions, and up to date, we have raised over $150,000 in seed funding and, uh, and grants. And we've won several awards. And last December, I was here and I pitched at the World Bank Youth Summit. And this is, uh, goes to show the recognition that we've gained globally. We, um, the students came up with a project called Recycle Up Your School, where they collect waste and then use them for, uh, um, for recycling and also for upcycling. We ended up building a school out of plastic bottles from the students. Okay, the, uh, the, the Queen of Belgium was in Ghana, she wanted to see our project, and there you have like kids from Sunflower School presenting their project to the Queen. Um, our work will not be possible without our amazing team. We are a group of Ghanaian and European students who came up to form a team, and we have a wide scale range from sustainable development to design thinking. We, are, we have been speaking on behalf of Ms. Viola when I was established to solve a problem, which is ongoing in so many different countries whereby we have so many Africans in the, in the diaspora working so hard to raise money to establish something back home. But as soon as they send this money back home, it is swindled or it lands in, the, in bad hands. And <laughs> especially friends or family relatives, and they divide this money to use to benefit themselves. And this is why when I was set up, so that you can be able to go online and buy construction materials in case you want to build a house for your grandmother, for your grandfather. You can be able to go online, see the materials that you need to buy, 
and you just buy with one click. So that's the problem that we need to solve. And why, why when I had where? First, it would be very convenient. The world is growing rapidly and everything is going to be tech best. It is a privilege to be here with you guys today because on most Saturdays when I'm not in class here, I am in the emergency room for 12, 13 hours a day taking care of people like Azania. Azania is the person you see in the middle. Thank you. Azania is the person you see here in the middle of the slide. Azania is 28 years old. She's a business student. She's an MBA student. She's married, has one child, but she also has a chronic condition, sickle cell, which most of you or many of you might be familiar with. Sickle cell is a chronic disease. It needs care. When Azania gets sick and she gets an attack, what she has to do while she lives here in the United States is pick up the phone, call 911, they get to her house in 10 minutes, start emergency care if she needs it, start IVs, pain medication, oxygen, and in another 10, 15 minutes, she's in my emergency room getting all the care that she needs. Today, Azania is somewhere in this audience. She's been at this conference. She's pursuing her dreams. This is Azania's cousin. This is Goodness. Goodness still lives in Zambia. Goodness comes from the same family. However, Goodness lost both of her parents already, so she was orphaned at a very young age. She takes care of her siblings. She is also widowed already at 28 years old, and she also takes care of her grandmother. Goodness is a businesswoman, business-minded, ambitious, just like her cousin. She works at the road stand, sells cooked food every day. But here's the difference between these two cousins. When Goodness gets sick, this is what getting to healthcare looks like. Even looking at the slide itself, this should be overwhelming, right? This is different from calling 911, Nobody's asking about money, no one's asking about insurance, you just get the care you need, we'll ask questions later. But for goodness, this is what the, the map looks like. It's talking to friends, getting on the bus, standing in line, waiting at the clinic, get on another bus, somewhere else, cash on payment, go to the clinic, I mean, go to the pharmacy, try to figure this out by yourself, right? Go to the pharmacist, explain your problems, they give you something, it's not working, do the whole thing again, right? At the very end of this slide, you see goodness is back in her household after going through all of this. Still sick, how this ends for her, we don't know. Maybe she'll get better, maybe she won't. Maybe she'll meet the same fate as her husband and she'll be dead before she's 29. This is not a story I'm making up, this is every day in Zambia. Health First is proposing a much simpler solution. The slide is supposed to be clear and simple because this is how we envision that health care can be done and can be brought to low-income neighborhoods, low-income communities, like the one um, goodness is coming from. The June Africa solution is to maximize visibility for Afrocentric and African artists. Um, we believe that since the publication of the Black Business uh, Buying Power, the Black Buying Power, as well as um, companies like 23andMe, ever since then, brands are going out of their way to create products that reach the Afrocentric community. But we believe that there are great products already in the Afrocentric community, and the creators and craftsmen just need great solutions in order to scale their ideas. We focus on value instead of price because um, since each item is printed specifically from the intellectual property of each artist, um, you can't get these items anywhere else, so we, we believe that we have a competitive product. So our most recent event is kind of going rock viral right now, so if you've seen the Afro Beauty Brunch, um, that's an event that we just threw last week, and um, yeah, so keep in touch so we can tell you when the next event is. Our team includes myself. Um, I work at the intersection of business and human rights, and I've also worked for a global Fortune 500 company in sales. My business partner, Chi Chi, she's currently working in Southern Africa right now, and she's replicating this idea. Um, and she's already hosted uh, several successful pop-ups. Special thank you to Georgetown University for hosting such an awesome event. And to all of the presenters that did such a great job. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. We really need to get the good word of positive thinking out to as many people as possible. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.